Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to look at Barn Door. Now this is the uh, fourth, I think, fourth in the Distress Oxide colour combination series. Uh, we're going alphabetically. We've done the A's, so we've done Abandoned Coral, we've done Aged Mahogany and we've done Antique Linen. We're now looking at Barn Door, which is the first of the red colours that we're doing. Um, and this really is a bright red. So I'm going to show you a couple of um, combinations. It can be quite scary because often I see red as a Christmassy colour and I struggle to see it any other way. Um, but yeah, I mean, red can be mixed with um, blue if you want something sort of patriotic, for example. It can, you know, it can go in so many different directions. But when it's a strong red, sometimes it's hard to know which direction to go into. Now, I would say that Barn Door really is the reddest of reds. There's a slight orange tinge to it, but not too much. Um, so you are free to go down a cooler or a warmer route, whichever suits you. I'm actually going to stick with the warmer colours today. And I'm going to do a three colour and a two colour, or sorry, a three colour and a four colour um, combination or blend for you. So let's look at Barn Door first of all. Now it's worth noting as well, uh, if you're watching these colour combination videos and you're noticing that I actually have... Uh, names on my handles for my blending brushes and I also have names on my ink pads. These are because um, I've created a download which you'll find on my website that's uh, lucollinscrafts.com. You'll find a free download there and you can get all these labels for you to print off at home, cut out and put onto your ink blending brushes and your ink pads if you wish. They do come in both plain black um, and they come in colour as well, so either or you can use. So this is the Distress Oxide Barn Door. A beautiful red, it is sort of a fire engine red. It's, it's, it is, it's just a red, isn't it? There's, there's no sort of, no halfway between it. It's a, it's a deep, lovely red. So let's do our first mix. Let's go for three colour and we're going to go with Festive Berries now, which there isn't a great deal of difference here. Festive Berries is more of a, a pinky tone. If we have a look, you really won't see much difference when you look at the up pad, so do refer to the labels. But I think as soon as you get any sort of um, Distress Oxide or Distress Ink home, do some swatches. Which reminds me as well, actually, while we talk about swatches, let me just show you something that I have got for you to download as well. And that is this. So this is my Distress Ink and Oxide swatch pad. Um, I would suggest print this out and then fill it in as you go. And what I've done as I filled this in, and this isn't alphabetical, this is actually more in uh, colour groups. So you've got your pinks, you've got your oranges and so on. I've not completed mine recently. I've had some new colours and I haven't filled them in. But where I've put an I or an O, that indicates whether I've got each colour in an ink pad or in, sorry, in an ink or in an oxide. Um, so if I've what looks like a number 10 is actually an I and an O, so I know I've got that in ink and in oxide. Um, you've got all the colours in here. I've just updated it to add the most recent colour, which was, um, what did we just have recently? I can't remember. There's Uncharted Mariner in there. Um, there's everything so far. I know there's one more colour left to come out. Oh, it was the grey, wasn't it? So um, the beautiful grey has just been released. Uh, Shadow, Lost Shadow, that's the one. So they're all in there for you. Uh, the, this front cover might look a little bit differently now as I've been updating them, but mine's pretty old, but I use it all the time to choose my colours. And that way you can compare your reds, for example, and decide if one like this, Festive Berries, is slightly more on the pink side or more on the orange side or whichever it may be. So you can see there, as soon as I put that down, hopefully you can see that that does have more of a pink tone to it but it's ever so easy to blend into barn door. So just give that a little bit of a blend there, but very, very similar there. So they'll look slightly different when they dry. Let's just remove the darker red and let's just blend this now into quiche flamingo. Quiche flamingo, I don't know how to pronounce that properly. And this is obviously a very different colour, but a lovely pink. If you're thinking about um, for next year, maybe Valentine's cards, maybe you want uh, a nice pink blend for a little girl, something like this. This is absolutely perfect. 
So the Quiche Flamingo goes really well into the festive berries, like so. And I can just see there's a little bit damp there still, so that's just drying, so that will shine that area there in the middle. But hopefully you can see there, let's just bring that down a little bit more. I think we need to... I do this, I do it very often go over my blends a couple of times with the two different colours to make sure I've got a really nice, a nice blend. There, when that's all dry, and obviously you don't have the bright light shining on it, it's going to look beautiful. So this at the bottom is a little more on the orange side. In the centre, it's a little more on the pink side, and then of course you go into the pink, and it's a nice way to lead a slightly warmer red with an orange tone into a nice sort of almost a cool pink up there and then you could follow on into purple for example if you wanted to because you've got that cool base in the pink so let's just pop that aside and let's do another color blend something a little different here with barn door let's go into almost sunset colors for this one so shall we start? We will start with the purple this time. So this is Seedless Preserves. And the reason I'm starting with purple is when I think about my colour blends and what order to put them in. Say so I've chosen my four colours. Um, um, you know, what, what order do I put them in? So I think about uh, very often the rainbow. So I think the rainbow actually goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet purple and that's the order you want to ideally put your colors in because that way they will kind of flow into each other now in this instance we're missing green and blue so yellow into purple will work but you'll kind of get a muddy tone so I'm going to bring the purple up to this end because we know that there's red in purple there's a red base in purple along with blue so the purple will lead into the red nicely which will lead into the orange which will lead into the yellow hopefully that makes sense for you but I tend to use the rainbow and the order that the rain colors are in the rainbow as a starting point for me and go from there but as we know with the rainbow colors they go full circle so you start with red you end with violet and the violet would lead into the red again so I've just bought that round to the front here okay so I'm going to start with my seedless preserves pop this one down first of all such a beautiful colour seedless preserves I'm really looking forward to getting around to doing the video for this one um, who knows what colour combinations I'll come up with all sorts I'd imagine lots of fun, different fun ones and that is going to lead beautifully into barn door so I always put down my solid colour first through the centre if I'm doing a blended panel like this. Like so. And then just up to the colour, I'm going to come in with the first colour I had, Seedless Preserves again. Not putting any extra on my brush. Just blending that join line there. Beautiful. I mean, that is such a lovely blend, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. If you just want two colours... Barn Door Seedless Preserves, stunning. Now let's go a bit lighter in the colours. So let's clean off our blending mat. The clear blending mat and the brushes and the Distress Oxides are all going to be linked below for you. As you can see where I purchased mine, both from the UK and on a US site as well. And then we're going to go to Carved Pumpkin. I've gone with really bright colours. The last video I did... Uh, were very very pale colours they were that was for the antique linen um, so we're really going much brighter today with these ones and I do love doing the bright colours it really shows off the gorgeous properties of distress oxides now I've got quite a large panel there let's blend it out a little bit at the end ready for the yellow but I think I need to come in with a bit more barn door just here I didn't quite go down far enough with this so we can apply some more red the solid color first and then start just working it in those little circles just as we get up to the orange again not reapplying anymore because I don't want to put some harsh color down where I don't want it and I want to go back in with my orange this is my carved pumpkin and just go over there look at that absolutely gorgeous now this is where this is wet because I've just reapplied the ink so you can see that line along there 
this is the dried ink so far and this is the wet ink as you can see there when I hold it up to the light so imagine when it's all dry it's just going to be the most stunning blend now as a four color blend I'll finish this off with yellow just at the tip and this is just going to be the most beautiful kind of sunset or sunrise either way effect it's beautiful okay so we know uh, orange and yellow work really well together so that's carved pumpkin into fossilized amber there there we go just blend those two look at that isn't that just stunning let's bring that away from the light so you can see that see the wet patches there where that's just drying that will that will go like this it will go chalk a chalky finish when it's dry it just takes a few moments you can heat set it if you want to dry it off quicker but i just prefer it to do its own thing and dry on its own isn't that a beautiful blend so there's two different color blends there for you this one's still drying as well uh, but two beautiful blends there for you all using barn door as the base as the starting point so hopefully this ha video has helped you if you're thinking about purchasing barn door or you've got barn door and you've never used it before definitely get get it out start playing start making swatches and mixing them with other colors and seeing what works and i'll be back very soon with another distress oxide blending video thank you for watching